Hello and welcome to the first StarCraft class. Uh, I've got one student with me today, Levi Isham, or Diaper Boy, as he is called. I I'm going to invite him to my party real quick. Um, let's just go over the basics real quick. What is RTS? Do you know what that is? Uh, um, Real-time strategy. Yes, real-time strategy. Now, what is your basic understanding of RTS? Uh, gather resources and build. Okay, that's a good that's a good start. Very good start. Uh, StarCraft obviously is an RTS, very competitive modern-day RTS. Um, classics would be like Age of Empires. The only difference, though, between Classic and StarCraft right now is uh, StarCraft is more of a fast-paced, skill-based, whereas uh, the old-timers, like uh, StarCraft 1, it's mainly about brawl and how many units you got, you know. But yeah. StarCraft 2 is very dynamic. Uh, for this lesson, we might actually only take up a half hour today. It's not a big lesson, but it's basically... Uh, we're just going to dissect a quick match real quick. Uh, go going to use the replay feature here. Good. Yep. Now this match in particular is a very good example. Uh, StarCraft 2, unlike most games, is a big honor-based game, meaning all players share this mutual trust slash honor system uh, that most games actually don't have. That's why I love Blizzard games. A lot of cool guys. Um, or girls. But, for instance, this match, my ally, for instance, was not honorable at all. The most honorable thing you can do in a game on StarCraft is uh, stick with your teammate till the end and keep trying no matter what. Uh, and that's the other thing about StarCraft. Uh, if you're going in the competitive aspect, you have two specialties. You could either be a 1v1 special player, or you could be a team player, 2v2, 3v3, 4v4, whatever. I've done both. I got to 1v1 Diamond and 2v2 Grandmaster for a day. So, wow. we're going to start this replay. I'm going to dice. We're going to dissect it. If you have any questions, I'll pause it. We'll dissect it, you know. Mm -hmm. So, wait, am I playing or am I just watching? This is a replay. We'll both okay. be watching. This match in particular is a great example of the honor system. Um... Yeah, we'll we'll see how it plays out. Right off the bat, I'll pause it so we can see what kind of a situation we're dealing with. All right. Game paused. So as you can see, I'm playing the Protoss up here in the left. Yep. Uh, blue Protoss. My ally is Zerg, and the opponents are one Protoss, one Terran. Mm -hmm. Now, all of the other players selected random. I was Protoss. Just from the loading screen, that's when you should start thinking thinking of your plan. Now, my failsafe for Protoss is a early expo, as you're about to see. Go ahead and bring up production real quick. Does the production thing show for you, by the way, in the upper left? Uh, Shows what's yes. being made? Okay, great, great. Now, as you saw, I put GLHF. Good luck, have fun. They said you too. As you can see, pretty friendly community. That's almost how every match goes. Uh, see, I called the early expo there. What's that mean? Uh, expo stands for expansion. So what I'm basically doing right now, if I pull up resources, you can see I'm saving my resources. I'm not making any more uh, workers. Yeah. You see, I'm up to 170 now, going 200. What I'm basically going to do is uh, go to that first expansion right over here below my base. That is where I'm going to build first. I'm going to get that early amount of resources going because they're random. I don't know what they're going to do, what race they are. I mean, I could take the time, send a worker all the way out there and scout them. But A, that's that'll be minus worker if they kill them. And B, that's worthless if... Uh, that worker's not gathering anything. So, fail safe for my Protoss. Early Expo. Got that Nexus up now. Uh, looks like my ally here, as you can see, they're going full eco as well. They're getting that Overlord out there. Yeah. Oh, and they're getting a the hatchery up. They're going Early Expo. 
I'm going to pause it here real quick. If you see down here, uh, Teal, the Terran player, as you can see, they're doing going for the classic strategy of blocking off the ramp. See that barracks? Yeah. They're blocking that off. They got the supply depot for the gate, you know. They also got a barracks being built at their base. Uh, personally, I would have built that second barracks along into the wall. Protoss players, they sometimes block the ramps if need be. Usually they do not if they share a base with an ally because unlike the, Pro the Terran, almost said Protoss, they do not have a building that can be used as a gate. Which seems like they're going off to a good start. They got a good number of SCVs going. They got a good idea of blocking off a ramp. Now let's go to units real quick. They have 11 SCVs. Uh, their ally has 12 probes. I'm up to 10. And the 10 is because I spent all that on the Nexus. Uh, the Zerg, 10. They have two overlords, though, so they should be making more. So, let's resume. Game resumed. As, of course, I'll speed it up a bit. That Nexus is being built. And there I go. Throw down that pylon next to it. We'll go back to production here. So, I got my first pylon. Now, normally... If you're not getting an expo, you should get that pylon up as soon as possible. Because that pylon provides the uh, supply you need for units. And there we go with the warp gate. Let's slow it down now. Got the warp gate going. Got that second expo right into action. It's about all about getting that going. Getting that second amount of resources going. So, got that going for me. And as you can see down in the lower left, the Terran are scouting. They've got that Marine going. Seems what they're going for is the three racks pressure. See, they just got a rally point. They're sending Marines out. It's okay. not a bad strategy, but it's not going to be effective. Hmm. Especially on this map. If you see here, they they uh, there's rocks blocking off the main to expo ramp or the flank. Yeah. Um, but the front is totally exposed. You can totally get up that. And as you can see here, they've engaged an Overlord, which honestly, I'm going to pause it right there. In this situation, what I would have done was ignore that Overlord, would have gone up here, and then you would have seen uh, my ally had expanded, I expanded, our bases are kind of devoid of anything. Mm -hmm. um, but instead, they're rallying here, and they're just messing with this Overlord. So that's a big no-no. If you're sending something out to scout, you should scout. Because the only reason that Zerg player would have an Overlord out there is if they had more back at base, which actually my ally doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of foolish. Game resumed. So we'll play it and see what's going on. As you can see here, the Protoss player is going straight for uh, Warp Gates. Four Warp Gates. They've got warp gate researching. I, on the other hand, you can see I only got two gateways and the cybernetics up. But if you look at income, my resource production is way higher than that Protoss. The other Protoss. Which is why my failsafe is always that uh, early expo. You get those extra resources. You can get units out quick. And as you can see here, the enemy Protoss is trying to get a probe out. They're going for that proxy pylon, which just got canceled. And this is another key part. Zerg, as you can see here, are chasing down that probe and doing damage where they can. Meanwhile, I've got one zealot that has this Zelnaga range. If I turn the camera to me, I cannot see those incoming marines right here. That's the key part. But, with that zealot being in position... Game I can now see those marines are inbound. And that gives me just enough time to start Game buffering the, uh, the enemy assault. It's all about how much you can see, what can you do, how much damage you can do in a lot of time. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. So, a zealot, uh, as you can see, was very, very tanky. An average zealot can take about three or four marines down if the marines are in small numbers of packs of four or five. But as you can see in that large pack, mowed them down in no time. 
Now the other key thing about Protoss, and I actually just learned this recently, you should actually be spending resources while warp gates are uh, going up just to get those early zealots out. Because I've noticed it just really helps if you're not getting cannons out, which cannons is a whole other 150. By the time you get another 50, you can make two zealots, so that's another key thing. I've no... I, this is what really confused me watching this replay. Game paused. Why were the Terran all the way down here? The only explanation I could think of was they thought we were uh, flanking them somehow. <laughs> but I don't know. They got the Marines everywhere. But as you can see here, from a tactical perspective, it looks like me and my ally are screwed. They got four Stalkers, whole bunch of Marines inbound. They're closing in for the kill. All we got is three Zealots, Mothership, and let's go to production. Six Zerglings on the way and two more Zealots on the way. Oh, and this merry band of Zerglings here. These four Stalkers, a uh, group of Marines, not to mention more Warp Gates that could warp in units at any time uh, from this proxy pylon here, and not to mention the probe. It would look like we're screwed, but let's let's see how this plays out. Go ahead and speed it up a bit. As you can see, the Marines are formalizing, and there they go. They're going for that flank right there. Fortunately, I built this pylon here so I could see that, so we got into position. But there's too many Marines for my mothership core to really poke them, get shot down immediately. So I decided to drop some photon cannons down. This is another key thing about knowing what you can do at the right situation. Game paused. So, as, insur as insurance said, I'll survive to the next attack. I got these cannons going up. Got my mothership in the back. Got my zealots up front. As you can see, the marines are going down pretty quick. These zealots are all pretty heavy. The shields are maintaining. The zerglings are in position. And actually, we got some banelings. Banelings will just... One Baneling could probably kill this entire group of Marines right here. Wow. About six, five. Now the Protoss, unfortunately, as you can see, they got about eight Stalkers here in the Mothership. And not to mention two more Stalkers warping in. They'll probably be hitting there while we're attacking here. But let's see how this plays out. Poked off a couple Marines. Marines are going for the Mac Micro, which is another key feature of the game. Hit runs. Uh, yep. The Protoss have decided to hit the Zerg player there. The Zerglings go. I keep my guys at bay. Now that's the key thing. Game paused. If we switch over to my view, I only see that the Zerg are getting hit here pretty hard. I have no clue where those Marines went. Logic though, using logic, I would imagine they went around, but at the same time they could have flanked back. Knowing I have those cannons in place, is a really key feature of this strategic movement here. Knowing that I have these cannons as insurance, it should be able to keep the Marines at bay long enough for me to help return, you know. So it looks like I'm going to move, just see what's going on, and then decide. Let's see if that's true. Yep, moving into position. You can see the Marines there. These Zerg, uh, the Zerg just killed them all <laughs> right there. Yeah. See, if I had gone in, I could have probably lost a couple of zealots. It's good to keep your units conserved. Meanwhile, as you can see, turmoil is building up in the enemy team. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, another key... F oh, go ahead. Uh, before we get too far, so you, don't re you usually don't build uh, turrets until you need them? That's the thing. Because they were random players, I went for that early eco. Yeah. Meaning that would have set me behind a bit, uh, which is why I only had two warp gates up at the start. Um, so I held off on cannons until I knew exactly where they would prefer. Usually the first route the enemy takes to attack you is where they're going to prefer to attack you. For instance, the Terran player attacked the flank route. Yeah. So logic would dictate that they will prefer taking the flank route to attack you. So I built photon cannons on the flank route. Now, on the other hand, if you're facing Zerg, I would get cannons up right away, as soon as possible. Alright. 
Terrans, I would maybe build one or two cannons and then a bunch of zealots. The zealots can take out most marines unless they're good at micro. But as you can see here that the enemy team is kind of, you know, losing it. Because they, they had that game in the bag, if you notice. They they could have totally killed us. Yeah, they could have. But they they just made some stupid mistakes and now they're questioning each other, which plays into the psychological warfare. If you can Make your enemy so, so angry. I do the same thing on CSGO. They will just make mistakes. Good example. CSGO, I got my HL DJ, which plays sounds over the mic. Halftime, I'll play Duke Nukem and Charlie Sheen quotes. Come get some. Winning. You know, stuff to make them angry, and then the next half they'll make mistakes. <laughs> Game resumed. As you can see, yep, they're talking back to one another here. Warping in some more zealots. Now the key thing to realize is I'm not making any stalkers yet. I'm getting blink up. Oh wait, no, I'm not getting blink up. I'm just getting the twilight up. But I'm not getting blink up. Now, because there is a Terran player, and because I noticed they like the flanking routes, I decided to build some photon cannons in my main base uh, because I felt like... If they're shifty, they're going to go for the shifty moves of uh, medevacs in the back of the expansion or minerals. So I got photon cans to counter that. That's also just a safety thing to do, maybe somewhere in the middle of the game or something. Really, the enemy is making a massive mistake right now. They have not expanded. They've gone full aggro. As you can see, they're getting an expansion now. But that's the main thing pro uh, StarCraft players in general struggle with map control and getting out there if you don't get out there take some land it's just going to be over basically you got to think of this entire game as a giant war of attrition attrition is a battle over land and resources your resources that you're fighting over for are these mineral fields and vespine geysers the land you're fighting for is objective like a uh, zelnaga tower that gives vision and other stuff Game resumed. Resuming, we can see that the Protoss, enemy Protoss, getting their first expo up. They're, they've got a pretty hefty army here. Quite a few Stalkers, a couple Zealous, Mothership Corps. You know, they're, get, they're getting out there. That Marine's just hanging out there by red. Let's speed it up a bit. As you can see, production's hitting a peak at my base. Got a bunch of warp gates going up. Got some photon cannons for safety, Twilight Council, and there's the first stalker of the whole game at the 11 minute mark. And right there, my ally left. He sent me a private message saying, we're screwed, they're too aggressive, we're going to die. So, I stayed in. This is where the honor system comes in. Most StarCraft players will stay with you till the end. They'll be cool about it, you know. No mm -hmm. cheese or anything like that. On the other hand, you got a bunch of wannabes and people from other games who don't treat this like an honor-based game. Or they treat it like, no offense, League of Legends. And they get all toxy and in your face. Well, game about to prove that theory wrong in this game. Go for the honor system. As you can see... Over here, Game paused. the enemy tried to use a good flanking maneuver. I will give them perks for the flanking maneuver. They tried to get a warp prism in here so they could warp in units. They know I'm down a guy. It's 2v1. They should have this in the bag. So they're going for any move that they can take that they can get in and it quick. Now at this time, I've taken control of the Zerg player. See, I moved those roaches into position to stop them. Um... Also, I've got full control of their eco, the Zerglings and Banelings. At the same time, I got my guys, the resources, etc. Looking on the map, my base and how much land I've controlled and acquired, as you can see, is a lot more than my enemies. They mainly went for the aggressive. How many units could we pump out and kill them? I, however, went for the technological route. This is called turtling. Because a turtle... Big slow guy, huge shell that's thick and hard to penetrate. Okay. It, 
it's probably my favorite type of strategy. <laughs> you go for I, that. I understand, yeah. It's just brutal. And and then after that, you do a technique called a steamroll. That's where you just roll in all guns blazing. <laughs> Which we should be able to see here soon. Oh, wait, hang on. As you can see here, I also went for the robotics facility. And this is usually my end game. I play a lot of Protoss Ground Force. If I'm going against Terran or Zerg, my number one unit I want to get out there besides Zealots are... Uh, Colossus, the big guys with the lasers. They just eat through those squishy units that the Zerg and the Terran put out. Mm -hmm. Looks like I'm going to mobilize here, sending out my units, the Zerglings ahead to scout, and the Terran player's going for a third expo. Let's see what happens here. Oh, here we go. Let's slow it down so we can see what happens. Took out that scout. So now they know I'm there, and that I'm coming. They canceled that. Here's where they made a mistake. They left the ramp down. And just <laughs> went right in. Unfortunately, they got those widow mines down. We'll use these banelings to take out the Protoss army. Good chunk of it. Massive, massive damage. Game I'm closed. just holding off the Protoss player here, distracting them with these roaches and stalkers. As you can see here, though, these valiant zealots are getting right past. Unfortunately, getting hit by widow mines, but thanks to their shield and tankiness, they're going right through. And this is the major part, as you can see. This is what you always want to focus. Sure, it's good and awesome to hit their base and slam their army down, you know, slam dunk it. <laughs> But your number one priority when doing any type of attack, even though you know it will fail, hit their workers. Even if it chases them away from the mineral fields, that is time where they're not getting any form of resources. Let's just go to the resources real quick. Watch Teal for a couple minutes. They'll get nothing. Look at that. They had no resources, and they're not going to for a couple minutes. The only thing they're getting is, what, like six gas from one SCV that didn't get selected? <laughs> mm -hmm. And their expo, well, they had one here. It got canceled, though, and this one hasn't even landed yet. Game Protoss player, getting a little overwhelmed now. I can feel it. Their stalkers are getting harassed by these zealots. They just made a huge mistake. If you saw Game that, they paused. got trapped in between the zealots and got massacred. Massacred. But they were smart enough, as you can see, they are leading the Zealots into these Widow Mines. Very good strategy. Bait, baiting. Oh, except if you just saw Game that, paused. that missile hit that Zealot and did friendly damage, took out a Stalker. <laughs> now this entire time, we've been focused on these Zealots, correct? Yes. And that's another mistake StarCraft players make. They go in all aggressive, but they don't focus back home. What's going on back home? Well, I've been doing both throughout this entire game. I've been actually managing four bases, my allies and mine. This entire time, if we oh yeah, we're already on production. I've got new weapon upgrades going down. I've got Blink almost done. I warped in all these stalkers while we were out there. And look at this, I also got a crap ton of Banelings getting put up. Not to mention the Baneling speed upgrade, more drones. My APM's skyrocketing but right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So just leave those zealots off to attack. We're By now I probably thought to myself, alright, just focus the base, get production going. Looks like that's exactly what I'm doing. The attack's over. Basically what's left is just harassment, you know. Make them angry. Banelings are done. Yeah, excuse me. Lots of production going on here. I got more warp gates going down. There's that robotics bay so I can get Colossus. Let's speed it up a bit. And here I go for another attack. That's the other thing you want to realize. When you go in all in on an attack, you got to have something to follow up. Keep that pressure on them. It's like League of Legends. When you're hitting a tower really hard, you don't want to fall back. You want to stay there until it's dead. 
And that's exactly what's going on here. Stopping him from taking new ground. We'll slow it down to normal so you can see these banelings. They're chasing that army all the way in there, leaving all of this, literally all of it, exposed. And they lost nearly everything because they got cornered right there. You know, my stalkers have free reign in the base. Those banelings said the eco, you know, all that jazz. They're trying everything they can right now. And even while this is going on, I'm still producing. I got new stalkers, new roaches. I'm getting a warp prism up too, so I can get some units out there in the field ASAP. Speed it up a bit. Those widow mines, really annoying. This is where it gets really special. This is where micro management comes in. You want to hit those units while keeping yours alive. Unit conservation. Now they're trying to bait me into those mines. I use blank, thankfully. At the same time, I've got reinforcements inbound. I've got that warp prism so I can warp units right into the field. Meanwhile, the Terran player's still trying. And here come the reinforcements. Bam! They can have those stalkers if they want. <laughs> Let's go speed it up here. There's those widow mines again, but as you can see, the warp prism is working out. It's all about all about getting that flank out, taking out those widow mines first. Now I will admit to a mistake on my part. Instead of getting the Colossus out right away, I should have gotten observers out because those mines, as you can see, are getting quite a few kills on me. Mm -hmm. Let's see here, seven on that one, six. It's just brutal. But, using all this, these roaches here destroyed all of Purple's economy. All of their expansion colony. The Terran player, their SCVs are trapped. They can't get back home, you know. Everything's going well in my favor. <laughs> Speeding up even more, you'll see a lot of hit and run, hit and run, back and forth. Just massive, massive carnage, you know hitting each other till we're both bleeding and it just goes on like that until I finally decide to get an observer out there just back and forth back and forth got the Colossus in position though now I'm hitting purple he's getting scared by now I bet yeah oh there's the observer got that observer their widow mines are no longer protected whatsoever I'm just going to keep hitting the enemy until they're dead now. Although I would like to point out real quick, the Terran player finally got their act together. As you can see, they're now expanding, doing what they can, you know, trying to recover what they can from the match. Mm -hmm. Honestly, though, the other mistake I realized is I should have been expanding more. I should have got this place. I should have gotten this expo. Should have used the Zerg, gotten these areas. You know, it's all about attrition, so you should gain as much land as possible. Now it's a bit more back to more back and forth. Got these zealots flanking to go hit the base. They cut off my warp, my warp prism, so I can't warp in new guys. So now I'm just hitting the base. There goes one purple left. There's a GG. Terran player still thinks he can do it. He still thinks he has this. He's what? He's got Purple's expansion here. He's got this place, that place. Honestly, he could have dragged this on and could have won if he lasted long enough. The Terran player. Um, mainly because if you if you can see, I I basically have no air units. I didn't even think of air production. I was all ground. It would have taken warp prisms to get over there. I did notice this expansion. Took that out. No economy there. And that's the GG. So, oh. yeah. That's basically paused. it. Any questions? Not that I can think of right now. All right. Now, that was a pretty straightforward match. 1v2, basically. Um... 
I think we got all that we could cover in that one. I'll show you another replay. This one we only have to use a short segment, not the whole game like that. This one, I just want to show you what un unhonorable would look like. <laughs> this is called cheese, and it's the most hated word in all of StarCraft. Jeez. Unless you're one of those people. <laughs> cheese, <laughs> it's hard to describe because it's so evil. Cheese is using the cheapest methods possible in the entire game to obtain victory at any cost. Now you're thinking, victory at any cost, that's what you should be aiming for. Mm -hmm. These people, there's a special place for them, I swear. <laughs> it's bad. I Game mean, really paused. bad. I'm going to fast forward here. Um, as you can see, I'm playing the Teal Protoss. This is a 2v2 Protoss all around. Uh, this cheese method goes all the way back to StarCraft 1, and it is cannon rushing. Game Cheapest easy. method in the entire game. I wish they would figure out some kind of patch, although it's kind of hard not to patch. That's why there's the honor system, you know, everyone's honorable. Yeah. As you can see, though, my ally is doing it as well, which really ticked me off. Um, they're doing cannon Russian, meaning you go right into their base with a probe, you build that pylon. <coughs> Excuse me. As you can see here, they're building their pylon, they're building theirs. Look at that. We're three minutes in. Three minutes into the game. And they already have two photon cannons going down. My ally's got his photon cannons going down. Now this is where it gets super cheap. This is called the spider web technique. It's where you build cannons to cover your cannons that are being built and you just spider web across the map. So we're going to fast forward here and you'll just see how this goes down. He's building that pylon. Ally thinks, okay, I can take that on. These cannons are covering it. There Game went a whole post. chunk, an entire chunk of my ally's economy. His economy's done for. Meanwhile, my ally did not choose a good position to do his cannon rush. Although I do not think it was wise. I went for my failsafe early expo, of course. Mm hmm this can actually be seen by red, I believe. No, actually, they cannot see it. Eventually, they do, though. I'm pretty sure. Going back down here, as you can see, Mask Carnage. Game there is, started. however, one way to counter that. Most cheesers or dishonorable players uh, sent one probe to do the cannon rush, because that's all it takes. So if you kill that one probe, you cut off their building supplies, meaning you can focus those cannons, you get it down. My ally, however, thought it was wise to kill the pylon that was clearly the bait. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he didn't even kill it. Yeah. Didn't even get through the shield. As you can see, blam, 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 their economy's down. They're down to three probes. My ally's flipping out. He thinks loss. You know, he's, he's, he's done for, basically. He's... He already has. And then, of course, I drop. You display no honor. And they go for the childish. You cry a lot. Meanwhile, I'm still trying to salvage the game. I'm telling him, get the heck out of your base. Go build an expansion, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm, I've got a good setup going. I'm getting zealots out. Blue's also getting there. Red's going straight for this huge army. He's got Stargate going down. Game resumed. Which you may think Red is not that dishonorable, uh, but actually, turns out he is a little bit dishonorable at the end. These photon cannons, horrible, 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 they're mowing it down. And right Game there, closed. what my ally just said, check your base. If we had any intention to finally cannon rush them and actually have a chance, they just ruined it. Mm -hmm. They literally just said, what to do. They showed them where their cannons were. <laughs> Ruined it for themselves, like an idiot. Mm -hmm. So this entire time, I already know we're screwed. Might as well, you know, keep going the honorable way. Red's yeah. getting out an oracle. Cheap. Cheap, 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 cheap. I mean, it's good strategy for, like, mid-game, early game. You know, that's when it's honorable. 
Because it's a good good blow that you can actually deal, but, you know, to someone who's already been hit by the most Jeez. dishonorable kick in the groin, basically. <laughs> Cannon rush. See these oracles? They have an energy weapon that can practically one-hit workers. And that's exactly what Red's going to do here. I have no air because I've been focusing on those cannons. And there goes my economy. <laughs> All in a couple green little uh, bursts. Game and see, now Blue's being in childish way. He's actually trying to make me angry. That's a form of psychological warfare. Fortunately, I have this expo going on. S stuff like that. Um, ask him if he wants to team up after. You know, just leave now. Save our losses. <laughs> but he, as you can see in his language, he's gone. Yep, there he goes. Lost. Because they play without honor. That just scrubbed the entire match right there. Mm -hmm. Now it's 1v2. Now, I'm just going to skip ahead real quick. You can still see on the map here how it plays out. It's just a series of hit and runs, back and forth battling. As you can see, Blue's up to four expansions on the map. Yeah. A lot of bases. They took out Purple's cannons. I'm basically cornered, making myself a little fort here at my main. It's just big, big, a big, big mess. <laughs> yeah. So we'll catch up here to near the end. Once it finds it. Okay, I think this is a good spot. Game Basically, they've hit me about 10 times now. I've hit them a couple times, destroyed some oracles. I haven't really been able to get out of my base because they have me trapped, basically. <laughs> As you can see, I'm building cannons, waiting for the inevitable. Just getting units up. Defending where I can. Mm -hmm. They're just taunting me constantly. There go those oracles again. Man, they killed those stalkers too. Quite the back and forth. Meanwhile, game this post. is the cheapest and easiest form of cheese in the entire game. Spamming. Spamming one particular unit that you know can out rank all their units and just be using it 24-7. Fortunately, Legacy of the Void is going to add a whole bunch of balance and game changers that will help buffer the unit spam because you can't really control person necessarily. Mm -hmm. This is where the childish player comes out because just wait till you see what Blue does. Red, his army composition is quite honorable. Immortal stalkers that can counter a lot of things. The Oracle Harass, good strategy. Cheap after his uh, ally already crushed one person, though. Making it dishonorable. Meanwhile, I'm still tra trying to skip salvage. And this is where the bombshell hits. This army right here. Honorable. Completely awesome. Good, good measure of uh, OP versus non-OP. Immortals and Stalkers. Good combo. Look at Blue's army. All Tempest. <laughs> The flying siege tank, as we call them. Mm -hmm. This the one of these ships out outranges everything I have. The only way to counter them is by just bum rushing them with a, a ton of units, which I can't even afford due to my downward in economy. And then like another kick in the groin, they don't even attack right away. They wait till red attacks. Well, I'm distracted to hit me. Game paused. As you can see here, these pieces of crap cheesed the heck out of this game. Completely mm -hmm. dishonorable, looked down by most players. I think the only time I've ever seen cheese used in an actual tournament was just a joke. <laughs> you know, say, oh, hoo hoo, I can't win. Oh, cheese. Oh. So bad. So, so bad. However, they noticed their ways, and they actually messaged me afterwards, private messaging me, apologizing for the cheese, and saying at least I tried. Because, you gotta admit, I gave him quite a fight, took out quite a few units. Mm -hmm. 
<sighs> worthy battle against red, unworthy against blue. I mean, look at this. They're hitting units all the way over here from there. I can't even see this back line on my vision, I think. Yeah, I can only see that much. Yeah. Just little blue balls coming out and killing me. That's all I can see. Mm -hmm. So, I think that, that that's a good start for today. That's right. basically just the basics. Uh, next class, I think we'll go over stats, unit counters, you know, stuff like that. Economy, how much economy, 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 economy. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, that wraps up this episode of the StarCraft II class. Tune in next time, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 7 to 8 p.m. An hour, 45, 40-some 40 minutes long, that's it. So...